billions of years of evolution. The many forms of life on Earth have woven their destinies together. They integrate, split, prosper, and perish. That includes us humans, who influence and in turn are influenced by this planet. Woo! Three scientific teams traversing into the frontier environment. To explore the breath of life. Dive deep into the network of life to decipher the codes of species. Used the most cutting edge technology to tackle ancient mysteries. And to find out how life can blossom in the most unexpected places, in the most extraordinary ways. Right here in this land of diversity.都在我们讲的这个泛西马拉雅这个范围，东面算起啊，是很乱山，然后在喜马拉雅山，再往西就是克拉昆仑。我们地球上高等植物大约有三十多万种，在中国有三万多种，在泛西马地区有两万多种。
这儿往定日定节走要走康普温泉，从这儿上去。所以没放下，没放，没放，因为视角不一样嘛。对对，行吧，行，那就这样啊，好，说吧，啊，注意安全啊。我第一次进藏也是跟着马队。啊。一零年我第一次进藏，他是一个很熟悉植物，还熟悉，呃，路况，还熟悉，就是这边的所有的风土人情，他都熟悉。我们每年进藏采集植物标本，是为后续植书编辑泛喜马拉雅植物志提供一个最基本的一个标本的引证的一个工作。你像我们每年有不同的区域的科考，像去年是林芝地区，今年是主要是日喀则地区。慢点啊，马队。This plant kingdom hidden in Himalaya is vast, but not all are considered ideal for botanical research. This is a tree. It's already in the tree. This is what we're going to find. This is a tree. It's 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 a tree. 就是没有花了，是吧？对，花冠已经谢了，花冠谢了就果实在里面就在发育，小坚果。有这个花，我就可以把它采回去当标本了，就研究是不是个新种。但是没有花的话，一般是不允许发新种的。<笑>对，所以时间稍微晚了一点。这么远的路就是为了找它哈？有点遗憾，应该早一点的，再找一找。To identify plant species, flower is more reliable because other parts like leaves could differ. Due to environmental changes, but as reproduction organ, flower need to be as stable as possible to ensure the reproduction of offspring. 把物种划分清楚，首先要讲分类学原理，在这个基础上，来使这个物种啊，精准化树木它的分布这种，这对生物多样性保护非常重要。首先，我们要知道这里有啥。我们才知道该保护啥，对吧？所以说，植物质的边缘工作是最基础性的一个工作，可以为后续的不管是保护也好，资源的开发利用也好，提供最基础的一个原始的一个数据。Today, flowering plants are the largest group in this kingdom. Also called angiosperms, they dominate most ecosystems, but they emerged rather recently in the geological timeline. But here. Plants with ancient lineages abound. This is very rare. Mosses and lichens are among the most primitive types of life. They're believed to be among the first to survive on dry land. Before them, plants' ancestors had only experience of living in water. The new settlers needed to adapt to different conditions, especially to gravity. They could only lay low, but plants evolved and grew proper internal structures or vascular tissue to fight the force and hold themselves up. The tissues, like skeletons, allowed plants to grow larger and taller and to better access resources needed for survival. And a new species appeared in the Earth Flora collection: ferns. Their special features are hidden on the backside of their leaves. Uh, bozunang也是一种繁殖器官，就像我们有花植物的花或果实似的。所以我们采标本要翻过来要看，就是看有没有这个bozunang. These little sacs include countless single cells called spores. When spores germinate and spread. They heavily relied on moisture to allow the sperm to swim to the eggs and finish fertilization. The special need restricts their habitat. To outgrow their dependency on moisture and conquer more land, plants needed further innovation. Jiaheguo, look, green spore. Spore, green spore. 
Furs have left a big footprint in the history of plants, as impressive as their size. The big evolutionary innovation came in these small cones, seeds. Both firs and pines are called conifers. They produce cones which will open and expose the seeds after reaching maturity. Therefore, botanists call them gymnosperms, or naked seeds in Greek. Compared with spores, seeds has more complicated structures. This allowed them to pack in food, including protein and other nutrients, to help plants grow. The self-energy supply system is called endosperm, so seeds can stay dormant for many years if needed until they find the perfect conditions for germination. That also allow them to travel far away from their parent plants. Himalaya balsam has the bizarre nickname Touch Me Not. At the end of the seed pods is a sophisticated mechanical structure. A light touch can trigger an explosion. Now the seeds are on their way. Flowering plants, including balsam, represent the final stage of a plant evolution as we know it. Unlike conifers which produce seeds in open cones, these plants grow their seeds in fruits for extra protection. But their trump card is the flower. Evolved reproduction begins when those flowers release pollen, and insects are involved in this process. To attract them, flowers diversified with arresting colors and alluring fragrances. But the biggest allure in the benefit package is the nectar. The flower of salvia has developed a sophisticated liver system. When a bug sticks his head in to drink the nectar, the lever system is triggered, sneaking out two stamens from above and quietly smearing pollen on his back. Plants keep evolving to ensure their reproduction and survival, and once they secure their footing in Himalayas, an explosion of varieties begun. Animals feed on a variety of flowering plants, which in turn reap the benefits of seed dispersal. Human utilize plants by cultivating them in vast fields, pollinating them deliberately, and consuming them with gusto. When the night falls, the most demanding task of the day is just beginning. Oh. 
及时的查阅文献，或者是电脑里面的数据库来查阅我们这个东西到底准确的种是什么种。差不多了，差不多了，差不多了。所以就是说，当天采回来一定要把它全部压制完，啊，放到烘机上面开始脱水，这样才能保证我们一天的爬山的工作的成果能够保存下来。采的多时候才两百毫的样子，这样子的话回来这个压制标本的量工作量是很大的。正常情况下的一百五十毫的量要干到半夜十二点，如果是两百多毫，那就是干到半夜一两点去了。The foothills of Himalayas are lush and verdant, but above 4,000 meters, the higher you go, the fewer the plants there are. It's getting cold and windy, and from above comes an invisible barrage of ultraviolet light. As the landscape gets dull, botanists find something attractive, like a torch looming out of the mist. Snow lotuses. It's rare to see so many of them together, taking up the entire slope. Botanists believe this is how they've survived the strong winds here. But the most extraordinary part is these pale yellow leaves. They're not petals. Botanists to call them bract-like leaves. These papery and translucent leafy bracts has fewer chlorophyll and enclose the flowers throughout their development. They then fall off after the fruits and seeds mature. That's the survival secret of the snow lotus. 有蜡质，比角质层。对，所以说你那个雨浇上去，人家不会说浇透了。Scientists have found that bracts can keep out the ultraviolet light, but allow visible and infrared light to pass through and trap the resulting heat, just like the glass or plastic covers of a greenhouse. The heat boosts pollen germination and seed development, and for insects. Those plants might be the only cozy shelter in an unforgiving environment. 看到这些白白的了吗？这白白的点儿，这就是虫的卵。它这是也是吸引这些小虫的一个方式。对对对对对。告诉小虫，我这暖和，我这快来。我这暖和，你来。然后进去之后还有香味儿，哎，还有吃的。我这又暖和又有吃的。对，我这是个是个小旅馆，挺好的。Larvae feeding on the seeds might be a downside. But that could be outweighed by the benefits of pollination by insects. One thing is clear: humans did not invent the greenhouse first; nature did. At this altitude. Survival stories are not just written by plants. Near Lhasa, on this dry, wind-whipped steps at an altitude of 4,500 meters, a plateau pika peeks out of his burrow. They look like rats, but are actually closer to rabbits. Summer is the most enjoyable time of the year. On the plateau, but those pika cannot let their guard down because they're on the menu of nearly everyone here. Rabbit's DNA helps them escape by taking advantage of burrow networks. They can dig up to 2,000 holes per hectare. On the surface, they look like Bilbo Baggins' Hobbit hole in the Shire. But the complexity is beyond imagination. Some are simply meant for escape, and others are more complex, cozy homes. Danger is just one chapter of the Pika survival story. Competition 
is another. It's partly the result of living in a crowded family, but it also comes from something bigger. Himalayan yaks. The VIP customers of this grass buffet. Despite their huge size difference, scientists categorize them as rivals. But latest findings say their relationship developed to something more. When the short frost-free season ends, how the pika survives harsh winters has been a mystery. They don't migrate, hibernate, use extra body fat. Or store grass in burrows like their American cousins. They skip nearly all winter strategies we have known so far. A recent analysis of pika's gut content, however, reveal the presence. Of yak feces. This behavior, known as interspecific coprophagy, is quite rare among vertebrates, but makes sense. Yak dropping is a low-effort food source that allows the pika both to save energy and protect themselves from the cold and the predators. This diversified nature. Can establish any unlikely relationship, but those pikas on what Junka is after. As the reptile expert, he is looking for a much rarer species, and is staring back at him. The Tibetan hot spring snakes, the highest living snake in the world. This high altitude area is very high. In the high altitude area, in the high altitude area, it can survive in the high altitude area. So these adaptive abilities are what we are looking for to investigate the direction of the snake. The snake's survival against the odds is the story of the creation of the plateau itself, which was situated at sea level eons ago. 现生的围圈蛇，它的最近的姐妹种是生活在美洲的低海拔地区。呃，我们猜测呢，可能是由于青藏高原的隆升，然后而保留到现在的呃青藏高原面上。Epic collisions between tectonic plates created the Himalayas. As the mountain thrust up, ancestors of those creatures were separated from their relatives and forced to embark on the cruel path of evolution. Most of their cold-blooded counterparts died due to the drop in temperature, but they survived, rely on a byproduct of mountain formation. Thermal springs strewed across this land. Deep below the surface, the mighty force of nature is still at work today. The turmoil below. Is reflected in clouds of sulfurous steam and boiling water, feeding its energy to the nearby rivers and streams. They use this cold water and the heat to help them survive the winter of the Himalayas in the high mountains. Hanging out in those natural sauna looks pleasant, but what's beyond is endless freezing wilderness. Those cozy hot tubs are a haven, but also a prison. The spring also restricts their menu. Today, the snake is taking aim at this alpine frog. Hunting is underway. Waits patiently and approaches silently.
a failed attempt. 1964, Li Jiatang and Jiang Ke are members of the Second Tibetan Plateau Scientific Expedition, or STEP. The previous mission was in the 1970s, which involved their mentor, Professor Zhao Mi, a pioneer of China's reptile research. Uh,对我们包括对整个的生物多样性来说是非常非常重要的，因为在当时的情况下，呃，基本是一个空白。那个年代下的老一批的科学家去调查。哪些地方的生物多样性的丰富度啊？怎么样？积累了大量的标本。从二零零零年前后，基因组学迅速发展，那使得我们能看一下到底哪些基因发生了改变，使得它能够在高海拔下生活下来。科研研究层层递进，
就回去再陪陪了。哎呀。Juan and his colleagues can now visit this area more frequently to discover new plant species. Making that possible are these growing road networks. Now, they're leading the team to the highest stop of their trip, Mount Chomolama. At the base camp, few signs of life, reminding people that they're really on their own. That high altitude is a problem. Another problem is that the forest is very dense. Because the forest area is seven to eight feet high, even up to ten feet high. But not all plants cower from the mountain cold and gusts. Like this rhubarb, which can hide its flower under the leaves to keep cozy. Or aerial phyton, growing out thick furs to stay warm. A similar strategy makes Sosaria the highest altitude flower in the world. And gentian lures geometry to shield UV light. 它可以把它的叶子通过一种叫镍合状排列的方式，排成非常标准的一个正方形，这样会极大的减少它的射光的面积，有效的防止那个紫外线对它的一个伤害。To maximize chances of survival, the best strategy is to keep a low profile, and none is better at it than this one. They're not mosses, but cushion plants. 这是一个非常巨大的一个点地梅，整个非常大一个植株长在这样的一个砾石堆的上面。实际上它是很深的，啊，越深肯定保存的水分是越多的。咱们可以试试。好，这到头了，拔不出来了，拔不出来了，因为它非常的紧。如果松它就保持不住水分了，所以它非常的紧，很多的分支聚在一起。后来这样出不来了，哎呀，可以看到上面有那种很明显很潮湿，很潮湿，就它水分非常的多的。Not only water, but also warmth and nutrients could be preserved within those comfy cushions. Temperature within remained relatively benign, five to seven degrees Celsius, as outside number fluctuate dramatically over the course of a day. Higher moisture favors microbial activity. In some cases, soil under contain 15 times as much humus as the rocky area near it. That's a sheltered mini ecosystem. Here, cushion plants were the last remaining oasis of life, allowing other species to thrive. 因为非常的巨大，它可以保留非常多的水分和营养物质，然后所以说其他的像禾本科的、梭草科的植物，甚至包括这个唐松草，都可以长它上面，很好的生活。This is a mini garden in this frontier environment. Scientists have found the diversity of plant species within those cushion domes could be about 30% higher than on the outside. Their presence is key. To preserving the biodiversity of alpine areas, paleontologists are fascinated by changes in biodiversity too, especially the cycles of flourishing life and extinctions through Earth's history. Scientists believe there were five great mass extinctions in history, including those in the Permian, Triassic, and Devonian periods, and some say the sixth is underway. 那么到底现在生物多样性处于一个大规模减少的阶段，还是基本处于一个正常的阶段？实际上是用现在的时间尺度来看，是我们很难看得清的。我们必须要研究整个地球历史的生物多样性的变化。生命的演化，它必然是受到了当时的地球上的各种环境指标的影响，比如说气候。我们想要知道生命演化它的一个驱动机制是什么。But even the top paleontologists have only a fuzzy view of Earth's natural history, which they have divided into huge chunks of 10 million years. That means they don't have detailed knowledge of any extinction or boom of life that occurred within those blocks of time. The details are not visible, especially the extinction events. We are not visible. And the Earth's current population is exactly 
要关注这些突发性的事件。所有的历史其实都是靠这个我们叫岩石和岩石里面的这些化石来记录的，然后里面的化石呢，就告诉我们的信息就更生动一些。Fossils are key archive of the past, but they have been regarded only as curiosities, beautiful but worthless, until the 19th century, when British geologist William Smith found the code hidden in the rocks. He discovered that superficially identical strata, or distinct layers of rocks, actually differed in their fossil content. 总有一个规律，就有些东西它老是在那个下面的，就是靠下的那个岩石里面；有些东西它总是在靠上的岩石里面。然后它整体的这个出现的顺序永远都一致。他把这个就就叫做化石层序律。Scientists started to realize the fossils could work as page numbers of a book to bring order. Into chaos, but they need to solve one big problem first. 绝大部分的以前的史前生物是不会保存在化石的。我们所现在看到的这个化石，就完全是以前那个世界的很小的一部分。As a result, it can be hard to tell whether changes in the fossil records mark real shifts, such as mass extinctions, or are simply caused by a lack of evidence. This gap has been filled by a recent attempt to bring Earth history into sharp focus. Professor Fan Junquan was leading a team to mine a new database of more than 100,000 records belonging to over 11,000 fossil species. They're relying on one of the world's most powerful supercomputers, the Tianhe Two. Every point represents a unit of calculation. So, in this way, we can very clearly see that the calculation is gradually improving. Fan hopes to unleash the intensive computing power of the Tianhe Two to uncover the hidden pattern by integrating fossil data as much as they can in order to compensate for the lack of fossil records. The machine didn't disappoint him. Because when your data volume is so big, the improvement in accuracy is certainly astounding. But to improve it to 2.6 million years is certainly beyond our expectations. From 10 million years to 26,000 years, that's 400 times in resolution improvement. The result: breathtaking details. Like we said, we use our eyes to look at our world, and we use this microscopic scan to look at our world. What you see in this world is completely different from the other world. Detail has been added to a long-known extinction, arguably the darkest moment in Earth's natural history. 最显著的几条线，就代表的是我们目前所认识到的地球上面最大规模的一次生物大灭绝，就发生在二点五亿年左右的二叠纪末的一次生物大灭绝事件。这次灭绝事件呢，导致差不多百分之八十一的海洋的物种，呃，灭绝，而且时间非常短，只有大概六万年左右，这样一个时间范围之内。The findings also cast doubt on one of the five great mass extinctions in the Lake Devonian, suggesting. That it may not have happened at all. The Nipponji Wanchi's one incident, um, actually is a very long extinction event, not just in one point, but in a single point. From our recent research, the results are that the time of the Nipponji Wanchi's one incident is not just in one point, but in a single point. From our recent research, the results are that the time of the Nipponji Wanchi's one incident is not just in one point, but in a single point. From our recent research, the results are that the time of the Nipponji Wanchi's one incident is not just in one point, but in a single point. From our recent research, the results are that the time of the Nipponji Wanchi's one incident is not just in one point, but in a single point. From our recent research, the results are that the time of the Nipponji Wanchi's 甚至于会变成一些错误的一些模式，也就是说，分辨率必须要足够高，它才能够真正的帮我们去揭示生命演化的实际的这种规律所在。As the new curve reveals more secrets hidden from Earth past, scientists wish to match those ups and downs on a time scale with climatic shifts in history. That will help us better answer one question than ever before: Is today's climate change driving us to a new? Biodiversity catastrophe. If we look back at the history of the Earth, is there such a pattern in the history of the Earth? If it is, it will prove that the modern life crisis is really present. If it is, if the Earth has been affected by a lot of times, the Earth's surface is higher, and the world is warmer, and the Earth has not been affected by the Earth's surface. Then maybe we can better understand the current climate crisis. Two thirds of the trip is over, but Wang Chang still hasn't found what he needs the most. 
，整个蜘蛛也就十个公分高的样子，不会特别高，不超过二十个公分应该。He has been looking for Tibetan skull caps and prostrate skull caps, two of the highest altitude skull caps in the world. 行，向前开。看样子，这一块是找不到了。Since their discovery over a hundred years ago, they've rarely been seen in, in the wild. 嗯、to find a plant that tiny, the most effective way is to lock down its habitat. Yang Shu, this part is like? This是一个非常大象了。哦。有窝箱材料。这个基本上就是跟那我们标准就相棒的，就那个一起出现的，所以这是什么东西啊？这个叫做西藏纽窝箱。老番薯丝。如果发现它就能说明点问题啊。就说